Hey Salesforce friends and welcome back to the channel. In the video today we're going to be looking at the Customer 360. What is it? <laughs> because when I first heard about the Customer 360 I thought it was a new license, and a new cloud, a new way of slicing things up. To be honest I didn't have a clue. But I have since had a bit of an insight into what Customer 360 is and without all of the Salesforce videos with the sales talk and the marketing talk to try and sell you something I thought I'd do a little video just to kind of see if we can look at what that Customer 360 really is. So without further ado, let's get into it. Right, so Customer 360. Um, here is the short, in a nutshell, version. Customer 360 is basically a sales and marketing concept to sell Salesforce products. Stay with me. So you already know about Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, uh, we've well got Marketing Cloud, and you've got all of these other types of products, okay? And Sales Cloud is usually the first thing that people or most people kind of purchase from a license perspective. And then maybe they bring in the Service Cloud to service the customer and, and, and eventually kind of piece together all of the different products and services that Salesforce has on its platform to create a bit more of a unified um, kind of process and way of dealing with customers or doing business within a single platform, that platform being Salesforce. Well, Salesforce have kind of realized that and what they've done is instead of trying to pitch to people, oh, do you want the sales cloud or do you want the service cloud or maybe you want marketing cloud? What they've done is they've gone, forget all that, talk about customer 360. In other words, this concept of being able to have one place where you've got all of your customer data, customer information, customer interactions that you can view in one place, but also then to sell to the customer, to service the customer, and also do analytics on the customer to help grow or expand that customer or service them better and create a strong relationship. And that's what it's all about. It's really, instead of selling individual products, selling a concept to businesses and clients like yourself or users in companies like yourself and think about buying everything because that is how you are gonna get real success by not purchasing lots of different products or systems. And even if you've got some legacy systems, integrate them all into Salesforce and then do everything, everything. All users do everything within Salesforce. Now, for someone that might be cynical, and I have been known to be quite cynical, a sales and marketing kind of concept, you might think, oh, well, there's a lot of hogwash then. But it's not really because it's actually a good thing because it can be difficult as a client. I've been on the client side before and it can be difficult to know, well, what, what products do I get? from Salesforce, what's going to be the most important or relevant or useful for me in the business or to try and realize the business changes that we want. And one thing, even if you put Salesforce aside, one thing that every single company that I've worked in or worked for as a client wants to do is to simplify and homogenize and bring in to a single place a view of their customer so that they can do more things with less licenses, less complexity, and less systems or processes, everything working in silos. They want everyone in one place. And that is the big digital transformation or types of transformation products that you get in companies, uh, especially companies where they've got a big IT department and they spend millions and millions and millions trying to, and I'm laughing because I have been in some companies that have spent a lot of money trying to do that. And you know what? I think it's a good thing. It's a good thing that Salesforce have finally gone, let's just clear through all of this product license talk and just talk about the concept of what every company wants to do. And here, here's how you can do it. Here's the products available to you to do it. And we'll take you on that journey. I'm sure there'll be consultants like myself that will take uh, clients on that journey to help them realize the benefits of having everything in one place because that's what they want. And also Salesforce sales and marketing teams as well will do the same. Now, let's have a quick look at the page on the actual Salesforce page itself because this Customer 360, and I really do mean it, is, is talking about all of the products together. So let's have a quick look at the roster of products and show how they all interconnect to create this concept of the Customer 360. So here I am on the Salesforce main page and because I'm in the UK, it's telling me about the live UK and Ireland um, dream forces that are going on. Um, but if I click on the products, you get this cool little panel that comes out and there you go, straight away, Customer 360. Now, again, it's not a product in and of its own. It's not a single, well, you might be able to get a single license, but that license really is for all of the things that you see below it. And you can chop and change, you can kind of first start with sales, like I said, then service cloud, then get marketing, 
But the whole idea is, is that Salesforce is saying, look, let's cut to the chase. Yes, we want your business, of course. Um, and we want everyone's business. But putting that aside, putting the sales aside, like I've said, I'm repeating this now a third time, every company wants all of the data in one place so that they can do more powerful things with it. And not just data on a customer, but also their users and their processes. When you have legacy systems spun up everywhere and you've got people in different departments that are not on the same platform, it slows everything down. Collaboration goes out the window or at least makes it very difficult. I'm not, I'm not Salesforce. I don't get sponsored by Salesforce. I anything to do with Salesforce other than that I've been working in it for a while. And even if I was in a different system, it would still be the same thing, the same endpoint that you have this idea of everything in one place or processes and users working together on the same platform. Why faff around working with legacy systems all the time? You, you obviously still need them, you know, for provisioning and stuff, but that's where the connectors or the integration uh, parts come in. And this is where MuleSoft, they bought MuleSoft for that. Anyway, customer 360, let's go through them all. Now, I'm gonna skip Genie, because that's pretty new. And I've got another quick little video that goes into what Genie is. We've got the sales cloud, as you know. So standard objects, it's just access to things like leads, account, contacts, opportunities. You've got cases in there as well, but it's predominantly geared towards the objects and functionality of sales. Okay, same platform, same functionality um, as Service Cloud from a base level, things like the flows and automations and all that kind of stuff. But you've got extra objects. You've got things like the Service Cloud uh, Console. And uh, you've also got this omni-channel servicing angle as well, which is where you're able to kind of bring in uh, and integrate with other systems. So you've got obviously email, you can get CTI plugins. CTI basically means like, I don't know what it stands for, but it's telecom interface. It's, you know, where you basically have your virtual phone. So you've got maybe a phone on the desk, or who has that anymore, uh, but you've got, who, people are in offices basically, uh, your mobile phone, but you can have, it's all in the cloud now, so you can have those calls route through, and when someone calls up, it brings up the customer on the screen. Social media as well, social networks you're able to bring in, so if someone goes on Twitter going, ah, oh, this product's rubbish, hashtag your company's name, and then you can kind of see that pop up and then reach out to them and see how they're doing, etc., etc. So service cloud um, being predominantly around servicing or after sales, supporting the customer relationship. Then there's Marketing Cloud. Uh, back in the day, uh, again, Salesforce acquired, because Marketing Cloud was never a thing. It was more just a campaign object, which is still part of the Sales Cloud as well and Service Cloud. But Marketing Cloud, they bought a company called Exact Target, and they specialized in doing marketing campaigns, more sophisticated ones and things like that. They've also bought people like, uh, companies like Pardot and others like that. Uh, which you could buy separate licenses for. But they've what they've done is pulled all this functionality in and other companies they've bought as well um, and put them into this marketing cloud concept. You've got Commerce Cloud. So Commerce Cloud is this kind of, you know, this B2C or e-commerce concept. What does that mean? Well, can I sell to people online? Or can I sell to people that might not be online, they might call you up and ask for something. So this is about what's called CPQ as, a, as, a, as an acronym, configure, price, and quote functionality, which is basically, let's say um, you, you've got an account, you create an opportunity, yep, you know that, but within an opportunity, you've got products. And maybe you've got price books, and maybe you've got some pricing rules. So if you buy this product, you get these add-ons, and maybe you have sold some subscriptions to this uh, person or company, and maybe you want a reminder, an automatic renewal set up, um, a couple of months before the end of the uh, contract term, et cetera, et cetera. So more complex ways and actually directly selling with customers and producing things like an actual quote or even a contract that they can electronically sign. Now, a bit of background, Salesforce had bought a company called Steelbricks and basically kind of converted that into their Salesforce CPQ and branded it that way. So it brought them in-house and, and used their technology and the stuff that they'd done. And they've also bought a company called Velocity and then they've used that for more complex enterprise level products and CPQ functionality. And I th that's actually under Salesforce Industries banner as well. Now there are other um, companies or applications that you can buy that do CPQ, things like CloudSense and others as well. Um, but yes, you th this is Salesforce themselves buying uh, these companies that fit well with them and then integrating them into the eco and actually selling them out as a license uh, under the Salesforce banner. Tableau, 
you, they've kept the brand name of Tableau. They've not gone Salesforce Analytics because they did have that and they had Wave and all of this stuff that came uh, before. But they've realized, okay, Tableau is a massive brand, very, very uh, well respected and regarded in the uh, data uh, analytics world. They, they basically bought the company you do, uh, and brought it under the Salesforce banner and sold it as part of the Salesforce uh, menu of products there. For me, the biggest challenge is people and change and all of this stuff because people get scared and think, oh, I'm going to lose my jobs automation. But the second kind of challenge is the technical one. So in a company, even small ones, but especially in big enterprise ones, there are some massive old legacy systems, some of them still on servers in, in network rooms. How do you, and, and they can't change some of these, especially where you've got banking or you've got highly regulated uh, areas or just very complex custom systems that are doing provisioning or, or order management or whatever it might be. Well, MuleSoft was another brand. They've kept the brand name as well. Very well regarded uh, integration expert company. And they bought them and their technology and integrated it into the Salesforce space. So now on that platform, you're able to connect natively or quite easily with uh, things like Google um, and other, I think off the top of my head here, but different um, uh, services, they've already got plugins for them basically, different applications and, and, and companies as well. But where there might be some legacy, this is where it gets more complex. You've got a system that the company built 10 years, 20 years ago. Um, as long as there's APIs for it, an API is basically the ability to communicate through the internet uh, with it and access it, um, then yeah, you can create a custom connector within MuleSoft to bring that data in. And a bit more sophisticated, instead of just bringing data in and doing a read, uh, only kind of uh, aspect, you could have a two-way interaction, a two-way integration, meaning um, we pull the data in and then we do something with it and then set and send an update back. Or it might be a case, especially if we go down this way, that in e-commerce, you might build a product, a, a bunch of products, you sell it to the customer, they go, yes, I'll have it and sign it. And then you automate the send or provisioning of that to your downstream provisioning system. So therefore you can connect with your legacy system to go, here's all the products, build them out instead of, which still happens, somebody, what's called swivel chairing, where they go, oh, type it in there, look at what it is, type it in there. Yes, you can automate it with um, uh, custom connectors. So great stuff with that. Slack. So you know of Chatter already, but Slack, as you may already uh, know, has been this kind of IT um, kind of led, it's more in the IT space uh, or business space, the ability to kind of communicate with each other and collaborate on things. So you might think, well, what's the difference between Chatter and Slack? Well, Slack is probably more a uh, upgraded kind of like a rocket fueled version of Chatter, but it also allows for better collaboration of, of people and partners and customers outside of your Salesforce ecosphere and your org. And that's the key thing there. So, you know, let's pretend you're working with some partners and you're trying to make a big sale with a, a, a client or another company and um, you can actually have conversations and groups inside or internally within Salesforce Org but you can invite partners in you could even invite some of the key stakeholders of the of the company that you're selling to in to help work together and collaborate on the deal or whatever it might be or even things like with servicing as well so slack they bought them for four billion or something like that from the, off the top of my head um, but yeah they're really pushing that as a way to make sure that everyone inside and outside Salesforce are brought into the same conversation. And we've got platform, so that's essentially the platform of Salesforce and the extra things that you can do, things like the Hyperforce and all of these kind of AWS services that where, you know, all of these things we've seen above, a lot of it runs within the org itself, within Salesforce. And so there are gonna be limitations to the service um, availability, speed, um, processing, power and you know the, the processing time that you can have on there. So where you might have really big complex things, this is especially where you get into the realm of data analytics or uh, analyzing data like with Tableau. It doesn't do the analytics on the, your Salesforce org. It goes out there and, and uses, um, I think Salesforce are using AWS and, and, and things like that now, but especially where we start getting into things like uh, Genie, so I've remembered, I'm coming back to Genie. Genie is like a brand new thing, but what G Salesforce Genie is, they've got some sort of rabbit, wizard rabbit or something that comes up, you should check it out, it's uh, quite hilarious. Genie is uh, something that they have done to try and provide real-time analytic or information um, from a customer in, from a customer in real time, from all sources. So it might be the case that in your Salesforce org, you've got the customer contact, great. 
Um, but you've got things like the birth date, you've got their address, you've got you know the name, their email, the phone. You've got maybe some of the orders that they've had already. So, you know, like from the orders object or whatever, or the opportunities that they've got open. So you've got the Salesforce understanding based on the Salesforce objects of that customer. Then if you build it out a little bit more and you start bringing in other data sources, things like maybe you've got some uh, third party um, companies or plugins, things like uh, credit rating companies like Experian or Credit Union, whatever it might be, will be able to give a bit more extra information from external services into that customer. So now you're building out this bigger view and it's more uh, enriched. And then you start bringing in things like so their social media um, accounts in there and, and information from social media networks. And then you've got things like their interactions. So, you know, their click-through rates on, on emails that, that you've sent them, or, you know, <laughs> this is where you start getting into the realms of security and, and, and uh, privacy, but whatever is available out there, things like, oh, so you're doing like, there'll be information from credit card companies. So that these are the type of things that they're buying and selling at these places and whatever. I know it's a bit scary, but this is all the information that's available uh, to a lot of companies today. Um, and as we find out more, but what it's doing is it's it's been able to pull all of that information from all of these places and then create this uh, unified, enriched view of a customer in real time. And that basically means that it's virtually uh, immediate. Uh, based on what the interactions are that they might be doing. You, know, you might just click on an email there and then, and milliseconds later, you've got that come up in your system. Now, that doesn't mean you're looking at the company profile waiting for something to happen. No. Uh, what this whole thing about Genie is, is that you then tie in automations from that. So if a customer does click through on an email or does something that will, will qualify them as a potential uh, customer that you might want to show something to them, either be a, an advert-driven thing or maybe a product, here's a suggestion or something that might be interesting or send them out a communication of, hey, it's 50% off that thing that you might be interested in. You all know when, you, when you're, you're on a website and suddenly you see adverts for things that you're like, you've just been talking about holidays and I mean, there you go. That's the type of thing that we're talking about. So that's what Genie is. It's a way of um, using lots of data, either from within your org itself, but also connecting with external sources of data and putting them all together to create a enhanced customer profile in real time so that you can actually make sales decisions or offers or whatever it might be, or even with services, and not all about sales, but being able to service the customer in a better way and market to them um, in, in real time. So it's really, really powerful stuff. So that's what Genie is, it's pretty new. So um, yeah, that, that's the uh, that, that's what that's all about. Net Zero, uh, so this is uh, objects and, and kind of like uh, an application that's built into Salesforce to try and uh, pull out and help you track your uh, impact on the environment based on the products that you sell, um, the, the things that you do uh, and set, the way you service the customers and, and the impact in terms of carbon uh, emissions or whatever in the, uh, the case might be that then builds up what your uh, rating is uh, internally uh, with the customer interactions as well. To actually just put a profile for yourself and go, okay, how do we then offset that carbon footprint that we're creating from servicing or selling to customers in what we do within Salesforce that you can track? And then you can see whatever it is that would create net zero, reducing your, your carbon footprint anyway, but also like planting more trees or working with other companies to offset that. So really positive uh, piece of um, uh, functionality and objects. Um, but again, it is part of that, especially where companies uh, have, have that, and all companies should, uh, have that at the forefront of what they're doing now and at least considering. And then you've got partners and experts and customer success. These are the wrapper professional services bits that go around. Um, but yes, that is that is essentially it. You've got all of these products that go under this banner of the customer 360 concept. The concept of having everything in one place, not just for the customer, which is the 360 view you get, but also having all of your users, all of your different departments, people and processes in the company all working together in the same place as well to create more efficiencies and to also be more powerful and have a better customer, or provide a better customer experience. So hopefully that's been useful. If you like the video, please subscribe. I obviously do a lot of these Salesforce type videos, uh, so do subscribe. And until the next time, hopefully you're living happy and productive Salesforce lives. Uh, and until that time, then I do see you. May the Salesforce be with you.